Hi, welcome to North Vancouver District Public Library. My name is Allison. I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories of the Tsleil-Waututh, Squamish, and Musqueam First Nations. In April, we're going to be celebrating first languages, dual languages, and reading around the world in celebration of International Children's Book Day, which is sponsored by the International Board of Books for Young People, Canada Division. We'd like to thank Julie Flett for her stunning artwork and Richard Van Camp for his story. So welcome to North Vancouver District Library and I hope you enjoy our first language story. In April, we're going to be celebrating International Children's Books. This is a celebration instituted by the International Board of Books for Young People, or IBI, which was established in part by Yella Lepman. Her story is told in a children's book by Kathy Stinson and Marie LaFrance called The Lady with the Books, a story inspired by the remarkable work of Yella Lepman. Annalisa kicked at the dirt and the rubble on the sidewalk. Women were still clearing away chunks of broken buildings and pavement with brooms and their bare hands. Couldn't they see that the street would never be what it had been before the war? At the market, Annalisa spotted an orange peel on the ground. She wiped off the dirt as best she could, and even though her stomach grumbled, she gave it to her brother. Peter gnawed the inside of it. Mm, he said, donc. Nearby, a line of people were disappearing into a long building. Maybe, Annalisa thought, someone was giving out food. She took Peter's hand and moved into the line. But inside the great hall were books, more books than Annalisa could count. She felt her heart lift and then a sudden pang. Papa used to take her to the library. When he read her Poudabar at bedtime, he used a different voice for every character, the donkey, the kangaroo, the piglet, and best of all, Poudabar himself. Now the library was gone, and Papa was gone too. Across the room, a lady was pulling books from a shelf and talking excitedly to a group of adults. Annalisa caught the word hope just as Peter began tugging at her sleeve. Read me this. I can't read that language, Annalisa said. Why do you want a story about an elephant anyways? Because I've never seen an elephant in a suit before. Annalisa and Peter got so busy looking at the books, they didn't notice when they were the only visitors left in the hall. The lady with the books came over and said, I'm afraid the exhibition is closing now. Peter hugged the elephant book to his chest. May I please take this home? I'm sorry, the lady said. I wish you could, but you're welcome to come back tomorrow. Out on the street, Peter was too tired to walk. Annalisa picked him up and carried him home. Mama was cooking with the last of the barley. She gave what little there was to Annalise and Peter. After supper, Mama took her Oma's old teapot from a shelf. It had survived the bombing with just one dent. Tomorrow, she said, I'll try to trade it for some fresh vegetables and maybe a spoonful of butter. At the market the next day, Annalisa eyed sausages hanging above baskets of fruit and vegetables. Did she dare snatch just one juicy, fat sausage when the vendor turned his back? Can we go to the book building today? Peter's question so surprised Annalisa that she missed her chance. Just as well, Mama wouldn't like it if she was caught stealing, and it would be good to be among the books again. Back inside the great hall, a group of children was gathered around the lady with the books. Peter pulled Annalisa to the front. This is the story of Ferdinand, the lady said. It was written in English, so I'll translate parts of it into German for you. The pictures will help tell the story too. 
As the story unfolded, Peter whispered, That bull is just like me. He likes flowers, and he doesn't like fighting. When it was clear that the bull would not fight like the bullfighters wanted him to, Annalisa was afraid to look. Her papa had been shot for standing up to men whose orders he didn't want to follow. With the turning of the page, Peter started clapping. Annalisa was happy, too, to see Ferdinand, after all that he'd been through, back on his flowery hill. Did you enjoy that? the lady asked. Did you have a favorite part? When he wouldn't fight, when he got to go back home. When he sat on the bee, the lady laughed. I liked those parts, too. Here are more stories I hope you will get to read in German someday. Pinocchio from Italy, Heidi from Switzerland, Babar from France. That's my elephant, said Peter. Turning to Annalisa, the lady said, I think you would like this story from Sweden. Pippi has no parents. And when the police try to take her to an orphanage, she outwits them. She is very clever and very strong. She can lift her pet horse with one hand. Annalisa smiled. She has a pet horse and a pet monkey. On the way home, Annalisa thought about Pippi, who had lost, lost both her parents and yet did just fine for herself. Back home, Mama was poking a long spoon into a pot. Annalise's mouth watered. That smells wonderful. The farmer was generous, Mama said. And on the way home, I caught a pigeon. We'll have enough stew for two days. That night at bedtime, Peter asked Annalisa for a story. Once upon a time, she said, as her brother nestled into bed beside her, there was a boy who had a green suit. He liked flowers more than anything, and he had a pet horse, Peter said. You'd like a pet horse? Yes, and maybe a monkey. Later that night, Annalisa awoke. High in the dark sky, the moon shone brightly. Careful not to disturb Peter or Mama, she got up and stepped outside. How beautiful the trees looked in the moonlight. The flowers, too, were blooming amongst the chunks of rubble. Tomorrow, Annalisa decided she would join the women with their brooms. She would help clear the streets around the damaged library, and maybe someday the building would once again be filled with books. But for now, she would go back to bed and sleep like Ferdinand in his field of flowers, and she would dream. We hope you can visit North Vancouver District Public Library and enjoy many books in many languages from around the world.